Bawal na nga bang kumain sa labas kapag tayo ay naka-low carb? To answer that, we can consider at least three things. Number one, gano'ng kadalas ka kakain sa labas? Number two, ano ang o-orderan mo kapag kakain ka sa labas? And number three, ano ang health status mo ngayon? And how badly do you need healing? Bakit natin kailangan isipin ng mga bagay nito? Ano ba yung meron sa mga pagkain sa labas? This is because when we consider our safe food list, karamihan doon ay mga raw ingredients. Yung mga meat, vegetables, kakaunting nuts and seeds, spices and condiments that you can control. Usually, ito ay mga natural spices lang like herbs, dried leaves, salt, pepper. For cooking oil, we only use coconut oil or di kaya for salads, we use extra virgin olive oil. And for other oil needs, hindi tayo takot kumain ng merong butter, taba ng baboy, taba ng baka. We don't add any additional artificial flavorings like mga MSGs, seasonings, mga soy sauce, and most especially yung mga sweeteners. Karamihan kasi because of palatability or yung sarap ng pagkain, many are putting a lot of sugar. These are loaded with sugar. Kaya, kaya karamihan sa mga pagkain, kahit ulam pa yan, it's actually loaded with sugar. And, and kahit pa, sabihin natin, those restaurants are already quite health conscious. Kung nililesen nila yung kanilang sugar, these are often replaced by sugar alternatives na halos katumbas lang rin ng sugar when it comes to macronutrient composition and at the same time, yung impact nito sa ating katawan. Ano yon? Number one would be honey. Kung ang regular white sugar is composed of 50% glucose and 50% sucrose, kung ang regular white sugar ay composed of 50% glucose and 50% fructose, ang honey naman ay composed of 45% glucose and 45% sucrose. So, actually, halos kapareho lang sila with only 10% na merong extra ingredient, yung honey, na hindi related to glucose and fructose. But its overall impact is 90% kapareho lang ng white sugar. That goes the same way with many other sweeteners like yung mga mascovado, yung cocoa sugar, yung mga manuka honey at marami pang iba because when you say that a certain sweetener is low in glucose index it could be na kinocompare ito with the effect ng glucose derecha but it doesn't mean na mababa ito sa net carbs because for all we know ito ay loaded pa rin ng fructose and fructose is actually more damaging than pure glucose alone And if you pair those sweeteners, high-carb sweeteners, with fats and proteins, then you actually have a deadly combination. Note that ang pagkain ng taba at ang pagkain ng karne, most of these red meat and fats are actually worse. They become bad only when we eat them together with high-carb foods. So, kailangan natin yun i-avoid. Not just the sweeteners, but the other carbohydrates tulad ng kanin, tinapay, pasta, mashed potato, and most common na mga side dishes like salads and even beans. Not to mention, yung isa sa mga bagay na gustong-gusto nating iwasan when we eat outside are actually the toxic oils na karamihan ginagamit ng majority of the restaurants in the Philippines specifically and even abroad because it's now a worldwide phenomenon na halos lahat ay gumagamit ng canola oil, vegetable oil, na hindi coconut or olive oil for their major cooking needs. And those oils, we believe, are not natural oils. They are factory-made, extracted from very, very dry seeds tulad ng sunflower, rapeseed, soy, sesame, at marami pang iba. That's why, as much as possible, we don't recommend anybody eating outside. However, we understand na to live a normal life, hindi talaga yon may iwasan. 
just like what you are seeing here, I am actually eating outside a couple of weeks ago kasama ng isang kaibigan ko for our lunch meeting. And that is one of the things that you should consider. If you have to eat outside, gano kadalas? So, as much as possible, you do it less often as compared to eating inside your home or eating foods that you yourself prepared or eating foods that are only in our safe list because the moment you are already eating outside, then you are already at minimum eating under caution list. Hindi na talaga ito super safe and so we just have to limit it or avoid it as much as we can. Ika nga, make it the exemption rather than the rule. Going mas madalas pa rin yung pagkain ng safe foods as compared to eating in caution list. Like say for example, in a week, minimum at least four times kakain ka ng safe list or you are fasting. And on the three days or less even, if you can do that, that's the only maximum limit for your foods taken under caution list. And second consideration, if kakain sa labas, ano yung kakainin mo? So of course, since hindi na natin makokontrol yung mga condiments, yung mga nilalagay na seasoning, yung ginagamit nilang oil and, and sweeteners, then at the very least, try to avoid first yung mga big carbs. So ano-ano yung mga big carbs? Usually, ito yung mga very very obvious. So, yung rice. So, kahit anong kulay pa na rice yung ilagay dyan, try to avoid it as much as you can. If merong other forms of grains like oatmeal or di kaya corn or other grain products like bread, lahat ng flour, mostly these are high carb foods except if it's a specialty store na nagsasabing low carb talaga sila. But right now, hindi pa rin ganun kadami. So, generally, try to avoid all of them. And kung meron man kayong i-replace na pangmalit ng big carbs to fill you up, you can just choose green leafy vegetables if you want. Or you can order a side extra egg. One, two, three eggs. It's okay. And if you can also ask kung ano yung ginagamit na oil nila, you can request for butter or coconut oil. And if they don't have, pwedeng ipapoach mo na lang yung niluluto sa tubig. That one is safer kasi if it's also hard-boiled, it might also take a little time. Not to mention that you might also sound weird. If wala ka namang problema doon, then by all means, go and request that. Pero if you don't want any hassle at wala ka rin time to explain yourself, then you just stick to what they have in their menu and order from there. So, mostly, kapag kumakain ako doon, I just look at the meat. So, it could be pork, or beef, or chicken, or seafood. And also, eggs if they have. And I just tell them na kung hindi ito full order, and it's like a combo with rice, they just remove the rice and replace it with greens. Or kung hindi sila papayag, just remove the rice na lang. No problem if it it's gonna cost the same. It's not a question kung ito ay magiging mas mura or mas mahal. What is important is you consider na hindi ka mag add up ng extra sugar and insulin burden sa katawan mo so that your low-carb journey ay tuloy-tuloy. And what did we order during this kain sa labas? So, the first one would actually be a steak and green salad. So, yung salad nila dito actually isang malaking chunk lang ng romaine salad. Meron silang nilagay na mga toasted na onions and also some sweet na garnish like sauces. So, tinaray ko lang i-avoid yan. And that's just what I ate. For our other meal, merong isang maliit na salmon without rice kasi pinatanggal namin and also the other one would be pork so it's a pork belly also just one serving kung iisipin mo magiging hindi ito nakakabusog kasi nga yung matitira lang yung kakaunting ulam ng fish and then yung maliit na pork I think it's just one slice of pork belly at yung steak isang serving lang din with greens but to those who are not 
used to eating low carb, actually, you will be surprised na kapag kumain kayo ng puro ulam lamang, even if it's not that much, and you also have other fillers like yung mga greens, and of course, you can also have some water on the side, you will be surprised that you will feel full, you will feel satisfied, kahit hindi ganon kabigat yung kinakain mo. So, this is just the pork serving that I'm telling you, and naghati kami dito ang dalawa. And yung kasama ko ma, who is also starting to eat low carb na din, is mas nauna pang nabusog kaysa sa akin. And even if she's been following our life without Christ, but she is not doing it as strictly pa. And she was happy to observe herself na ganon pa lang nabusog na siya. But what I tell her also, if you want to stay fuller longer, mas matagal kang hindi magutong, you might want to increase more your protein and fat intake. At huwag lang basta-basta mag-load ng sobra-sobrang daming gulay. Because it's okay if you can accommodate eating more. Like me, for example, malakas talaga yung appetite ko. So even if I eat a lot of vegetables, I can still eat a lot of meat. But for most people that I know, kapag kumain sila ng maraming gulay, after niyan, busog na sila. Wala na silang gana to eat other meat and even eggs. And so, after one month or two months, nagre-reklamo na, bakit sobrang payat ko na, ayoko nang mas pumayat pa? Because you're actually not prioritizing what you need to prioritize during your meal window. And that is eating the most nutrient-dense foods. And by nutrient density and quality of fats and proteins, it is mostly found in meat. So, kapag kumain kayo ng karne, ng chicken, ng meat, ng eggs, those are actually going to fill your nutritional needs at hindi puro tubig, fiber, at hangin lamang that are mostly in vegetables. Of course, vegetables are good. They are also loaded with micronutrients and certain vitamins, pero they actually lack on macronutrients. They are low carb, mababa sila sa net carbohydrate, pero mababa rin sila sa protein and fats. And when we do low carb, our major source of energy is nasa proteins and fats actually. So there should be a good balance of proteins, fats, and low carb foods that are also high in vitamins and minerals. So that's just one trick when eating outside and for those naman who tend to overeat try to do or practice some mindful eating hindi bastang sobrang bilis lang kumain try to take pauses in between your meals try to put down your utensils magkaroon ng break in between choose and swallow para mas mabigyan natin ng time yung ating chan to process and our brain to actually get the signal na tayo ay tapos nang kumain or we are already satisfied with our food because by timing yung utak natin can realize that we are already satisfied and and full 20 minutes after so medyo delayed yon that is why if hihintayin mo na mabubusog ka na na sobrang busog ka na before you stop eating you actually already ate a little more than what you need. That's why one of the oldest living people in the world, the centenarians in Okinawa, Japan, one of their secrets why they have long life, kahit kumakain sila ng carbs, because they have this discipline to stop eating when they are already 80% full. So, hindi nila hinihintay na maging sobra-sobrang busog sila before they stop eating they stop eating kahit pa 80% pa lang yung busog nila. And that is also just enough for them, just enough for what their body needs, and that's one of the considered secrets why they have long life. And lastly, for our final consideration, how badly do you need healing? Ano yung health status mo ngayon? If you don't have any health issues, then you can accommodate eating outside from time to time being mindful of all the other things na pinagkwentuhan natin, all of those things considered, and still make it as minimum as possible. 
However, if you need serious healing, like yung katawan mo, marami pang signs of inflammation, you are always in pain, like you shoot up yung blood sugar, meron kang signs of insulin resistance, tumataas yung yung blood pressure, merong tumors, merong mga bukol, worse, merong cancer, then as much as possible, please, please, please try to limit your intake of foods prepared and cooked outside especially commercial ones i see a lot of patients sobrang nalulungkot ako when i know someone na ayoko na mapakialaman yung buhay nila but i know they are battling serious illnesses they are on dialysis already they have cancer they have tumors at ano yung kinakain nila fast food it's always fast food at sinasabi nga nila because their life is already on terminal end and ini enjoy na lang nila yung last meals nila but i don't think that's really enjoyment it's just a matter of perspective because sa totoo lang mas maraming food na sobrang sarap but it's still on the safe list we just need to learn them we just need to know them and we are actually lucky now na marami ng support groups online that we can join for one we have life without rice for food inspirations ng mga low carb meals and also marami namang communities na pwede makasupport sa iyo and we even now have low carb doctors practicing nationwide can accept online consultations kung gusto ang magpa-guide ng mga taong may sakit so the point is you should consider if those foods were the reason why you are sick in the first place kung yung pagkain ng mga pagkain na yon ang rason kung bakit kayo nagkasakit at gusto niyo yung gumaling you have to ask yourself first, kaya mo bang i-let go yung mga pagkain na nagpapasakit sa iyo to begin with? Because if not, then there's no point of thinking about healing, thinking about improving. If you will just rely on medicine alone, wala pong kahit anong gamot na makakasagot ng mga sakit natin. It has to be root cause and since majority ng mga root causes natin in addition sa genetics, in addition sa traumas and many more malaking bagay yung ating kinakain yung ating nutrition when it comes to our overall health status so those three things you need to consider when eating outside it's how often, gano kadalas kayo kakain, I hope paminsan-minsan lamang and secondly ano yung order nyo Avoid the big carbs, avoid the heavy sauces na alam nyo mataas sa cornstarch, mataas sa mga sweeteners and other condiments na nasa caution and danger list. Just eat the safer kind of meat, proteins, and non-starchy vegetables, yung pinakasimple lamang. Avoid yung merong mga mayonnaise and choose the natural ones like vinegar lang. So vinegar is low carb. Avoid also even soy sauce because it could also be inflammatory and lastly if you have to eat outside you have to consider yung health status ninyo so if hindi talaga maiwasan you can order the ones na merong sabaw para walang vegetable oil and you can just remove the sabaw or eat a little if hindi kayo sure kung anong nilagay nila dyan or you can have grilled for poach or steam so yun yung mga better options when it comes to considering oil sa mga sauces naman try to remove them hindi mo kailangan higupin yung mga sauce and of course most importantly eat the meat and the fats ng walang kasama big carbs so i think that's the mindset that we should at least bear in mind if ever kakain tayo sa labas or in times where we cannot cook our own food at mag order lang tayo, kahit pa kumakain kayo sa loob ng bahay ninyo, but you're just ordering outside, that is still considered as kumakain sa labas. And if you can't really avoid it, at least just know that it's a deliberate decision. Ikaw mismo ang nag-decide niyan at alam mo kung anong consequence niyan. So don't be confused. Don't ever wonder if ever you still can't get 100% optimum health kung meron pa rin kayong nararamdamang mga kirot, kung meron ka rin kayong mga nararamdamang allergies, asthma attacks, aches and pains, pag shoot up ng blood sugar, pagkakaroon ng fluctuations sa iyong blood pressure. So, those things could be related to eating outside. 
and eating those food items na merong halong nasa caution list and danger list and maybe more often than your body can accommodate. Know your body well dahil ikaw lang yung nakakaalam kung anong tama para sa'yo. We are just here to guide you, to give you some idea of the things that you should consider. So, yun lang muna for now. I'll see you again in our next video. Remember to always stay low carb so we all stay safe. Have a good day everyone. Thank you.